This is the uh, M Audio Trigger Finger Pro. It is a 16 step uh, sequencer drum. Basically, it's in a way, it's a drum machine. Uh, they, they call it a MIDI controller. It's not actually a drum machine because drum machines have sounds that are built into them, and this does not. In order to use this uh, to create sounds, you would need some uh, digital audio workstation like ML Studio, Ableton Live, or Pro Tools. And there are three major components uh, to the Trigger Finger Pro. Uh, the first one, and the one that probably most people uh, ask about, has to do with these buttons down here. This is a 16 step sequencer. We have a 16 pad uh, drum pad configuration here. And then we have our control functions over here between four knobs, four sliders, and four buttons. Looking at the drum pad first, uh, you can see that we have we have a row of four times a row of four. Again, that gives us 16 different drum pads. They are velocity sensitive, so depending on how hard you hit them will influence uh, how loud or how soft an instrument may be. Or you can actually set it up that if I hit it real hard, it will play one sound. If I hit it real soft, it'll play a different sound. Up here, there is a thing called the pad bank. If you hit this button, this will change color and it will uh, it will give you 16 new options. So then you would have, instead of 16, you would have 32. If you hit it again, you know, and, and again, uh, there's four different pad banks, which gives you a total of 64 different sounds that you can play at any given time. The step sequencer is a 16 step sequencer. It is broken up into blocks of four. So for uh, most musicians that do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. This is the four count that goes with that. Of course, four blocks of four equals 16 steps. You will notice that there is a bar button down there. So one uh, sequence of 16 equals one bar. And in order to make it to where you can use more than one bar, so you can have, instead of 16 steps, you can have uh, 32 steps or even all the way up to 64 steps, you would need to hit the select button right here, and then you would hit like a different bar button, like bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four, and whatever one was highlighted, you would see the light, means that that is the bar that you were actually programming things for. Now, each one of these uh, uh, step sequencer uh, sessions pertains to each one of these paths. So if then I have a bass kick right here, which I will demonstrate for long, if I select that, you will see how many times the bass kick hits in a given bar. And if I have like a, a, a rim shot or I have some snare drums, uh, each, you know, the sequence will change depending on which pad that I have selected. Up here is the control functions of the Trigger Finger Pro. We have four knobs, we have four sliders, and we have four buttons right here. And we can adjust those by hitting control bank. We hit control bank, it will uh, allow us to go in and manipulate these, the parameters for these, which are all mappable to whatever DAW or workstation that we're using. So if you use, uh, if you want to, in FL Studio, you want to adjust your mixer sliders, you can actually map these uh, to those sliders. If you want to adjust the pan or you know, one of those, uh, those inserts, one of the, the dials on one of the instruments, you can actually adjust. You can take this knob and you can map it. And the same thing with these buttons. I can tell these buttons that Maybe I can turn the metronome on and off, or maybe I can turn loop recording on. And off. So that's what this, the uh, control section is doing. And just like the pad bank, if you select the pad bank, you can get you know all sorts of different controls. The control bank does the same thing. So it will give us actually, uh, it'll give us um, 16 different um, slider controls. It'll give us 16 different knob controls, and then 16 different button controls. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this on. In order to do that, we have to have a USB connection between this and the PC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a USB cable. Uh, I happen to have one right here. The USB cable we have is the big one. It's the one that people are probably most familiar with. Uh, it's the one that absolutely will not plug into the bottom of a cell phone, uh, unless it's so old school that it actually takes it. I, I don't ever remember seeing uh, cell phones that would accept something like so what we need to do is we need to plug this into the back of the, uh, the Trigger Finger Pro. In fact, if I hold it up like this, you'll see that we have a USB port. We have a 9-volt um, adapter uh, 
for 120 volt uh, sort of uh, receiver there. And then we have an actual, we have a MIDI out. This is if you have an external MIDI component, like a synthesizer, what, you know, and then of course we've got our power button and if you have the M Audio logo right there. So I'm gonna hold this up and I'm going to plug this guy in. Now when you plug it in, you should hear, um, make sure it's plugged in. You should hear a little ding on your computer if all goes well. And of course I'm gonna turn the power button and here it comes, it will flash blue. And that's how we know that the trigger for your Pro is on. Now, if you look up here, you will see the LCD interface. And it shows right now that it's set up for Arsenal. It says up for, for you know, whatever four VRS is. I don't really know. And here's your preferences button, Mike. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this down. If you turn this, you will see that a little arrow pops up here. And it says it'll give us an opportunity to change the layout of this for different uh, configurations and different programs. So right now this is for Arsenal, and that's some software that came with the Trigger Finger Pro. I'm not really interested in that because I don't want to use their stuff. I'm going to uh, set it up for, uh, for FL Studio, which is a program that we use here at the high school. So I'm going to turn the dial, and it says FPC FL Studio. And then as soon as I do that, I'm going to hit this button. I'm going to push it in. Um, actually, I don't need to do that. And when I do this, when I'm going to turn that, when I when it says FPC FL Studio, I'm going to hit load. And of course, all of these buttons now change color because these are actually configured to work with the FPC uh, plugin that goes with the uh, FL Studio. Now we have a sequencer lit up, we have a tempo ready to go, uh, we have these buttons that are illuminated that we can, you know, we can map these controls, we can map these knobs and buttons to the uh, inner workings of FL Studio pretty much ready to go. Now that we have the Trigger Finger Pro hooked up to FL Studio, I'm going to demonstrate basically how this works. Now that we've got it, we've got it set to uh, FAPC, FL Studio, and we have it loaded up, and we know we've got this color combination like this. Uh, we're on the right track. So how does this actually work? Well, what you basically do, if you can see the screen, I have FPC here brought up. I'm going to kind of tuck it down in my little corner so we can sort of see it interact with each other. If I hit a, a pad here, it triggers the FPC on the computer. And if I keep doing that, you'll see that they correspond with the actual pads. When I had it set before to, to the um, the arsenal, it's not configured properly, so whatever button you hit or whatever pad you strike, it will not affect this appropriately. It has to be set up here to where it says FPC FL Studio. So then I can, and if you see, if I strike that pad, it will trigger, it will trigger the sound hence the name Trigger Finger Pro. So what we're going to do right now is I'm actually going to do this. If you come down here and you hit sequence and then you select the kick, you can come down here and you can say I want to push that one, push that one, push that one, push that one. And if we hit the play button, we should get... Okay, so what happened is it played it, but then it quit playing it. Here is the reason why, is because we're, it went through bar blocked. One, two, three, and four. And we can change it, because right now it says four bars up here. I'm gonna push this button until it actually only says one. Now we're gonna hit play. Or I have to, I think I have to select. Okay, and now it will loop one bar over. Now, if I hit the record key, and I can test things out. If I turn record off, I can say, so as you can see, depending on which pad I have selected, we will get a step sequence for that instrument. And we could also see them sort of light up and play back uh, whatever keys that I've struck. They 
things that's important to point out is how FL Studio and the trigger finger pro work. If you notice down here, you've got a series of buttons we've talked about, the talk about the pad, control, and sequence. And I believe um, what happens is when we turn on the sequence, we will get a menu uh, that looks like this. If I hit control, it will change that menu so I can actually manipulate the controls that work in FL Studio. And if I hit the pad button, it's going to give me an opportunity to sort of like uh, mess with the different things. Right now, I notice that the tempo is at five. So if I hit play, I can adjust the tempo like that. I can speed it up and I can slow it down. But what I've noticed is that the tempo on FL Studio is sitting right at 130 beats per minute, not 78 beats per minute. So how do we get these two things talking to each other? Because I actually want FL Studio to tell the Trigger Finger Pro, what um, you know, uh, what the speed should be. So I'm going to exit out of this, and I notice that the, well, as soon as I do, there's this thing called preferences. And when I click on preferences, as you can see, there's a clock feature. And in that clock, if I push it, it now says external, which means that this is controlling this and telling it what to do. So if I hit play, it's much faster. And we can see that it is 100 beats per minute. Now, if I slow this down, then our digital audio workstation is actually telling our Trigger Finger Pro at what speed um, it needs to be at. One of the things we should mention is exactly how do you how do you get um, you know the Trigger Finger Pro. Go up to options, you'll see the little settings. And if you click on that, there should be a window here that brings it up. And you should see Trigger Finger Pro Mackie and MIDI. And I believe that we have Send a Master Sync on for both of those. But down here, they should be, it says Enable. And I think, depending on which one it is, for this uh, controller type, it should say Generic. And Mackie should say Mackie Control Universal. I always set it to Port 1. If you change that port, it will change it uh, from there. So, I, you know, whatever one you have selected, if you put that on the port one or two or three, uh, that's, that's what it uh, should be set at. I noticed that if I change that number, I kind of need to keep these numbers the same. So if I change it, make it one for Trigger Finger Pro Mackie. I also need to change it for Trigger Finger Pro Mini. Also make sure that Auto Accept Detector Controller is enabled. I think it is the same for both. Uh, again, make sure that the MIDI is on generic controller. Up here, Trigger Finger Pro MIDI. I don't really change the ports, which you can do up here. I mean, you can if you want. Uh, I just never really have any use to do that. Uh, make sure that these are Send Master Six are enabled. And then when you're done, go ahead and click out and you can test it. If it doesn't work, right off the bat, what I would do is, is a close FL Studio out after you have this all set up. We uh, start FL Studio and things should take off. And the, what those what those controls do, the ones that say Mackie, is it allows you that if you hit this, you can start FL Studio playback uh, with the actual Trigger Finger Pro itself. And if you hit stop, you will stop FL Studio's playback. Now the record does not enable the recorder here. So if I enable it, watch what happens it does not enable it because the record has to do with this step sequencer, not uh, the functions up here. It's not uh, this step sequencer here. But um, you need to keep that in mind. That record only affects this, not this. 